Hello, my name is Aristide and I purchased a P1S because my A1 Mini could not print my engineering filaments. Whether you're setting it up for the first time or considering purchasing a P1S, this video is for you. For the last year, I've been using the A1 Mini, which has been a breeze to use. In this video, I'll go over my initial thoughts, opinions and explain why the P1S might not be the best choice. Let's dive in and explore the process of setting up the printer. So the first difference was I didn't know what screws to take out or not. Didn't really clearly see anything in the manual, so I was a bit confused. Can't deal with this shit. This is not cool. As an A1 Mini user, it was easier to install it. Bamboo Labs, send me stuff for free and I'll speak more positively. But it wasn't that difficult after all. When first opening up the P1S, make sure to take out these three screws so that the print bed can go up. The screws were really the only problem I struggled with a bit. The rest was just cutting zip ties and removing obvious foam, which took me about 20 minutes total. Oh, oh, fancy. Connecting the printer, I had to download an app and sign my rights away in the terms and condition, only to set it to land mode later. But overall, this was very easy. So the first thing I will be printing is the hip bolt to my uh, Aeron chair, since that piece broke. Nope. Oh, here, this piece broke. This is PLA currently. And yeah, I'll print it in polycarbonate. Now time to load up the filament and get printing. Aha. Uh -huh. So you have to go to feeding. Alright. Oh, let's load some filament. Right, so I stuck the filament on the tube and let's see, it has been extruded. It's a little harder to see that with this one. Something I'm noticing, P1S versus A1 Mini. The P1S seems to be calibrating the entire bed, while the A1 Mini only calibrates the area it prints at. But Maybe this is only for the first print. Let's see. While these guys finish printing, I'm gonna go walk my dog. Winters in Germany can be pretty harsh. Gucci has been retrieved and all kitted up and we're ready to go. So right now I'm waiting for the print to finish. Uh, my first initial impressions on the printer are actually it's printing very clean. I mean I know the A1 Mini wasn't made for polycarbonate but in the past when I was printing the polycarbonate it was stringing up a bit and having some issues and well my first impression so far none of that is happening on the P1S so for engineering filaments it's kind of fulfilling its purpose. Gucci, up. Considering the price, the A1 is 300 bucks and the A1 Mini is 200 bucks. And I am not sure if 
I would say the 500 bucks is really worth it. I mean, the print bed is a little bit bigger than the A1 Mini, but you can't really use the full 256 millimeters. I mean, I think the next generation is just about to drop, so I don't know if it would be worth it to buy it right now over the A1 or the A1 Mini, since those are just absolutely amazing printers, and the A1 doesn't have the exclusion zone, so therefore the print bed size is actually bigger. So unless you really need to print engineering filaments, I personally recommend the A1 Mini probably. Let's check on the bamboo printer. Perfect print quality. Those were my initial impressions of the printer. To summarize my final thoughts and explain why I mentioned earlier that the P1S might not be the right choice for everyone, I'll compare the P1S to the A1 Mini based on six points. Ease of use, noise level, build volume, price, material compatibility and future proofing. 1. Ease of use. The P1S is very easy to set up, but in everyday use it's more difficult to see if the nozzle is extruding. Then closed sides mean that debris that doesn't fall into the waste chute can end up inside the printer or even ruin a print. You also need to keep the doors open for printing PLA or PETG, which wouldn't be an issue if Bamboo Labs hadn't already solved these problems in their cheaper printers. For this category I have to give the point to the A1 Mini. 2. Noise level. The moment I turned on the P1S I was struck by how loud it is. It's a beast, not just in print quality but also in noise level. Coming from the A1 Mini which is quiet enough to fall asleep next to, this is a surprise. The P1S is loud enough that even with noise cancelling headphones it's hard to hear the music over the sudden motor movements and numerous fans. I even had to turn off the chamber fan for some prints to work in peace. The A1 Mini doesn't have the noise issue, so for this category the point has to go to the A1 Mini. 3. Build Volume Technically this category seems obvious, 180 versus 256, how could the A1 Mini win? Well, what makes me consider the A1 Mini as the winner here is that its 180mm is fully usable, while the P1S's 256mm is not. There is an exclusion zone in the corner which effectively leaves you with a build volume of 256 times 210 times 250. This odd size wasn't mentioned anywhere and I only found it through trial and error. There are some workarounds, but for this reason I can't award the point to either printer. If you want a bigger printer with a bigger print volume, the A1 might be the better choice for you. 4. Price. The P1S was on sale for 580 euros while the A1 Mini was on sale for 199 euros. For the price of one P1S you could buy three A1 Minis. Unless you specifically need engineering filaments, you'll likely get more done with three A1 Minis. So for this category I'll award the point to the A1 Mini. 5. Material compatibility. This is where the P1S earns some points back. For the price, the P1S, with some minor upgrades, can handle a wide range of engineering filaments, like CFPPA, nylon, ASA and more. The A1 Mini doesn't handle higher temperature filaments that require an enclosure like polycarbonate as well. So this point is easily given to the P1S. 6. Future proofing. When using these printers from Bamboo Labs, one thing is clear. The P1S is based on an older model and perhaps even on an older mentality from Bamboo Labs. The touchscreen and menu on the A1 Mini are much sleeker and the device much quieter. It has quickly swappable nozzles, all features missing on the P1S, which makes it feel outdated. In my opinion, future Bamboo Lab printers won't be aiming to replace A1 series 
which is excellent and hard to beat for the price. Instead, likely they'll replace the X1 and P1 series. So this point goes to the A1 Mini. In conclusion, while the P1S has its strength, especially when it comes to material compatibility, the A1 Mini shines in almost every category. If you're looking for a cost-effective, quiet, user-friendly 3D printer that is well suited for most hobbyist needs, the A1 Mini or its bigger brother, the A1, are hard to beat. The P1S might be worth considering if you specifically need to print with engineering filaments. But for the majority of users, the A1 Mini offers a better overall experience. Thanks for joining me on this comparison and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you agree with my points? Or do you have a different experience? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more content.